And so the string of mediocrity continues. This is going to be a spoiler-free review, so I don't need to worry about that. And also, usual full disclaimer, I'm not entirely familiar with the backstory of all these characters, so I can't discuss the accuracy with which they were represented in the film. It seemed good to me, but I don't know. Additionally, I've also not seen Man of Steel or Batman vs Superman, but the written the way this was, I think you don't really need to know that much of those other movies. I mean, it pretty much sets up its premise in the very first 30 seconds of the actual plot. As far as what I thought of the film overall, it was okay. To the film's credit, there were a lot of things done right. The choreography is great, the music fits a lot of the scenes, the sound effects were especially on point. Uh, I enjoyed a lot of the characters. Some of the characters were given a certain degree of background, which made them more relatable. The villain was really cool. In terms of plot, everything worked out pretty well. The special effects and even the settings are top-notch. And I'd say overall I had a decent time. The movie's biggest failings, unfortunately, come down to the storytelling elements. Specifically, a lot of scenes felt rushed or that they had been badly edited, and there was very little scene cohesion starting out. I mean, you get one character doing one thing and then immediately with no kind of exposition or uh, establishing shot or anything like that, you get an entirely different scene. It's like a lot of these connecting elements were left on the, the cutting room floor. I imagine if we get a director's cut of this and it fills in these gaps, we will have a much stronger movie. I would say that you could cut the first two scenes of this movie and actually have a beneficial impact. And I'm, I'm just going to talk about this right now. It's not really spoilers because they're just the first two scenes, but the first two scenes introduced Deadshot and Harley Quinn's characters. And then we got another introduction to them later on, so the first two scenes felt entirely unnecessary. I mean, that's, that's a pretty shitty way to start your movie. But anyway, what's the plot? Amanda Waller, kind of a big name, good guy slash bad guy of the DC Universe, wants to counter the metahumans, or superpowered heroes and villains of the world, by establishing her own team of metahumans. She does this, however, by selecting exclusively from a pool of criminals and psychopaths. We've got Deadshot, Harley Quinn, Captain Boomerang, Diablo, the Enchantress, a couple of good names that I've heard of uh, before, many that I was not familiar with. However, when an extremely powerful metahuman attacks Midway City, Amanda Waller has to send in the Suicide Squad in order to save the day. And, uh, it's pretty intense. Now, as I've said before, I'm not terribly familiar with the Suicide Squad in general. The most exposure I've ever had to them was Batman Assault on Arkham. But I was rather impressed by a lot of the portrayals and the characters themselves. Uh, particularly, if I had to pick a favorite, I'd actually say uh, Diablo. He had cool powers and he gets a pretty sympathetic backstory. And second would probably be tied between Will Smith's Deadshot and Rick Flagg. Rick Flagg because he's a badass spec op soldier, and Deadshot because it's Will Smith playing a marksman who never misses. A lot of the other characters are pretty much there to fill a role because they needed bodies. One in particular, uh, I think his name was Slipknot. He exists pretty much for one purpose, and you'll understand it when you see the movie. Now, of course, a lot of the big questions on this movie are going to be, how are the new portrayals? How's the new Joker? How's Deadshot? How's everything? Well, breaking down the characters bit by bit, Will Smith played, I thought, a very entertaining Deadshot. I mean, he follows a lot of the usual Will Smith tropes. He's commanding, he's passionate. Uh, in this case, he has a daughter that he, he really cares about, and the main reason he's going along with this plan is so that he can get a chance to see her again. Margot Robbie plays a psychotic and, quite frankly, downright hot Harley Quinn. She doesn't really get a lot of good lines, I would say, but her personality is such that every time she's on screen, you're paying attention to her. Viola Davis plays a very cunning and borderline evil Amanda Waller. She's very cunning, she's very strategic, she has a backup plan for almost everything. I felt very conflicted about her character because at one point I, I wanted to see her die, or at least get severely injured, uh, because of, of how she was treating others around her, but at the same time she's so prepared for everything that you can't help but respect her. At least respect her intellect, I mean certainly not her morality. The woman's a bitch. And of course the big one I think a lot of people are going to be discussing is Jared Leto's take on the Joker. Is this Joker going to set any kind of precedent? No. Quite frankly, I thought he looked more fun in the trailers. 
His character is in love with Harley Quinn, and it actually seems legitimate in a lot of ways. Unlike from Batman the Animated Series, in which case it is clearly an abusive relationship and the Joker is just using Harley for his own purposes. And it's strange because this isn't really an interpretation of the Joker that I was really rooting for. Part of this problem might be because I saw Killing Joke last week with the much stronger performance from Mark Hamill, but Jared Leto's Joker didn't really come off as the Joker. It was more like a crime lord with a clown motif. I mean, it's not bad by any stretch, it's just, I've seen better. Although it was fun to see him on screen, although that was largely because he literally almost always came in guns blazing. With all this going for it, DC had a really solid chance of having an excellent movie. Instead, the scripting and directing problems came back to bite it in the ass. None of the scenes felt too long, but many of them felt too short. I mean, this is kind of what David Lynch went through with Dune. It looks like we had a three-hour movie that had to be cut by almost an hour. But the scene cohesion was just so mishandled. I mean, you could always tell what was going on, but it, it was just this awkward wedged-in cut. And another problem that the movie had was actually the music. And this was unfortunate for me because I thought the trailers used their music very effectively. I mean, the trailers made the movie look bouncy and exciting and alive. There were multiple scenes early on where the music was just wedged in. It felt like they were editing the music in post, and it didn't matter if it really matched the scene, they just wanted to get as many songs from the soundtrack on screen as possible. Sometimes the music was too loud, I thought. Oftentimes it would take me out of the moment, and instead of focusing on what's going on on screen, I would think, huh, that's an odd choice. Fortunately, that's done by the 30 minute mark. The music gets better once they get to the actual fight scenes. It actually fits with the pacing and, and the noise and the action on screen, so it becomes much more bearable. If they were to fix this movie, they would have to, in my opinion, rewrite and re-edit pretty much the first 30 minutes. And when you have a setup like that, where the introductory 30 minutes are scrambled or rushed or cut awkwardly, it sets for a bad precedent for the rest of the movie, even if the rest of the movie is good, which I would say it is. Summarizing everything though, if you're going in for fun fight scenes and a lot of action and enjoying things on a technical perspective, then you'll enjoy this. However, if you're going in for an enjoyable storyline, then you're going to be a little disappointed. Ultimately, I'd say it's okay. I mean, by all means, go out and see it, just don't get your hopes too high. And now we have to see if DC repeats the same mistakes with Wonder Woman. Joy.